This is the Profound Vibra kit as supplied by Tech Rentals. Um, we've got manual, a couple of manuals, accessory list, certificate. This, in, this one happens to have a CD with it. We're no longer supplying them with CDs, putting them with USB memory sticks. We've got uh, the actual transducer here, USB cable. Uh, here's the instrument itself. At the bottom we've got a couple of screws. We screwdriver, we need to perhaps replace the batteries. They're spare batteries. And here's the alarm. To turn the alarm on, uh, we simply push this button and it will begin to flash orange. Now, just um, to turn the alarm off, by the way, you push this button, hold it till it shows red, and then remove it. It's the only way to turn it off. Anyway, I'm going to turn the alarm on and leave it on. So it's now flashing orange. I'm going to connect the transducer to the instrument, so I simply plug in here. We turn the instrument on simply by hitting this on switch. Okay, we've got the instrument turned on. Uh, we can move up and down the menu, and there's these two soft keys. Now, first thing we've got to do here, um, initially we've got to do uh, set the thing up, essentially program it. Okay, um, first item up here is interval. Now, the interval represents how often you uh, take a record. Now, that would be basically a function of how, um, how uh, tightly you need to resolve the time um, on your works on the site. So one minute would probably be um, okay. So I'm going to edit that and arrow down here and select every 60 seconds, for example. That would be a figure there. Save level. Now what this represents is that um, the recorder will save nothing if the level is below 0.1 how it's currently set. Um, when you're downloading the results, this can be a little confusing, so you're often, you are often better off having zeros in there than otherwise. So I'm going to set this one to um, off. So you can use the down key and you'll notice that we get the last item here is off. We go OK. The alarm level. Now, this is where you will have uh, had to Google and look up what allowable peak particle velocity you're, um, you're trying to achieve. You're trying to... Um, protect the building against, etc. Now in this case, um, a, a typical value will be 10 millimetres per second. Now what I'm going to do is set the alarm level in this case at 7.5 because I think that um, you know, it would be good for our operators to know. Uh, they can see the, the alarm starts to flash. It will start to flash when it exceeds this level and they'll know they're hitting their machines a bit hard and they've got to ease off a little bit. Now with the alarm, when the alarm is flashing, you can either manually clear it, which means you've got to come up to the instrument or leave it flashing for a while. Uh, I'm going to leave mine flashing here for um, five minutes, for example, so the, the, the alarm will continue to flash for five minutes after it's been triggered. Uh, the alarm interface is wireless. And uh, where it says nine traces per hour, that means that records the highest nine readings within an hour in detail. Okay, um, the unit can be always on or it can be just on uh, whilst you're working. Uh, you may want to only run the opera operate this the logger between say 6.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. while you're all actually on site. That saves lots of battery, etc simplifies things. Project, you can set up a project name. It's a little bit of fiddling around, but you can set up a project name. Anyway, once we've done with all of this, if we go back, we can save our changes. We go OK. Right, now we've re reset the logger. Now, the next item down here, one of the things you've always got to check is make sure the date and time is correct. This is correct in this instance, so we're away there. Few other items on the menu. You can test the alarm. That's always useful just to make sure the alarm's going off, etc. Right. So now we are ready to go. We can now push start measurement and the logger will start logging. Checks the geo phone and displays what the current readings are. Now it'll um, pick them up in a second. Uh, you'll see because it's a one minute interval in this instance. Uh, there's a countdown here. And when it's counted down, it'll give you the highest reading in that period. So if I just drum the desk a little bit, 
um, we'll find we'll get a, a reading that will come up um, when it counts down to. There we go, and that was 3.44 millimeters per second at that at those frequencies, etc. When you're putting the instrument in the field, um, you can leave the instrument inside the case and run it out through this little gland and the instrument then is uh, largely waterproof, etc. weatherproof. Uh, so the only piece will be that's exposed will be this particular transducer. Right, we're out in the field. We've got this uh, mounted in a prominent position so your operators can see it, um, whatever. The transducer's mounted. Uh, and now we come down here and we can push uh, OK for start measurement. Right, to show you how sort of sensitive this thing is and why you've got to be a bit careful about where you mount it. For example, you wouldn't mount it in an area that's loved to be exposed to traffic, etc. If I just simply bump the desk there and I've well and truly set it off, that was 22 peak particle velocity of 22 millimeters per second. So um, it is rather sensitive. This is a very easy to use instrument, I'll just clear that alarm. It's very easy to use instrument, it's a nice package, it's all put together. If you're concerned about uh, damage you're operating um, and you want to actually objectively sort of figure out, yes, okay, I, I need to get some information here, I need to, I need to be safe, um, this gives you a really good set of measurements at the end of it. So the process is um, set it up, take your measurements. Now, last thing you've got to do is uh, download the results. Now, you uh, you need admin access on your PC. Uh, you install the software either from the CD or the memory, memory stick. When you install the software, um, uh, uh, the first thing you do, you run up their, their application and you have to then click on File and you have to add a license for this particular instrument. And that's very important, otherwise you can't talk to it and you have to have admin rights on your PC. You then plug this instrument into your PC and it's a very simple procedure then to download the results from the reading from the, the instrument. So you would then package up all the photographs of, you would make sure you've photographed all the site, where you've mounted this uh, with any notes as to why you've mounted it, together with uh, a diary of the works, the time and um, the type of works taking at place at what time together with the results from here and uh, it means the fact you can then sleep comfortably at night knowing that you've done the right thing and you've uh, taken all the necessary precautions and applied due diligence when operating heavy machinery near uh, heritage buildings or buildings that are liable to be damaged by movement.